Good afternoon, everybody. I'm really excited about sharing these three things that you can focus on to improve longevity. I don't know why, but I just got very excited about sharing this with you guys today. Because I've been doing this well-being challenge. I think that's maybe where my brain is focused. You know, it's like you go shopping for a particular car or color of a dress and suddenly everybody has them. Maybe that's where my brain's like, okay, you want to focus on well-being? Well, these are some things that you should be focusing on that also correspond to longevity. Longevity is a really interesting kind of hot word in the sense that everybody's talking about it. What does it mean? Well, it means decreasing your risk of mortality. Yes, we are all going to leave this world toes up, um, but <laughs> the quality of life can improve. You can increase your lifespan by improving the quality of your life by doing a few things. And these are going to be in the physical realm. Of course, there's many, many things I think start in the mind, which will flow into your physical habits, your dietary habits, and all those things. But these three things in particular have scientific evidence, and so we're going to walk you through them, one, what they are, and then how to improve them and make it simple. That's the other thing I think focusing on that we have this, we live in the very complex modern world makes it really hard to do simple things that have huge impact. So I think from now on, I'm just going to keep on trying to focus in on simple things that you guys can do every day to improve your health and that I can do too. Um, so what are these things I've been talking about? It's VO2 max, right, which is your maximal oxygen intake and or uptake, and then leg strength, and then grip strength. So what are those exactly? Well, they are measures of longevity because they really reflect your overall fitness, right? Your functional capacity, your health status, and really are in important determinants on how you're going to live lengthwise. And I'll explain why. And this is why and how it relates to longevity. So first of all, you have VO2 max. So that's your maximal oxygen uptake. Now, what's the definition? It's the maximum rate at which an individual can use oxygen during intense exercise. It measures cardiovascular and respiratory fitness. And how does that connect to longevity? Well, a higher VO2 max um, is associated, associated with a lower risk of death from all causes, including heart disease and cancer. So a higher VO2 max indicates a well-functioning heart and lungs, efficient, efficient circulation, and really robust cellular mechanisms, right? All of which are vital for healthy aging. And then we have leg strength. So what's the definition of leg strength? Well, we know what a leg is. So it's two appendages that help you walk. Um, leg strength is often measured through exercises like a leg press or squat, and it really indicates the power and endurance of the lower body muscles, okay? And how is that associated with longevity? Well, strong leg muscles are really crucial for a, for a few things, right? Mobility, balance, and performing things like what we call activities of daily living or things that allow you to live independently without the aid of others or um, certain tools or instruments like a cane or walker, for example. Now, research has shown that greater leg strength is really a reduced risk of falling, um, better metabolic health, and a lower mortality rate because we don't want people falling. We don't want people breaking a hip, which science has shown that you have a much higher risk of dying within 15 years of falling and breaking your wrist versus someone who hasn't. So, and additionally, um, maintaining leg strength really can prevent what we call sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss, which contributes, again, to a longer, healthier life. And next is grip strength, okay? So what's the definition of grip strength? Well, grip strength is really a simple yet powerful measure of overall muscular strength and function. Um, it's often measured in what we call a hand grip dynam dyan dianometer. Ooh, that would be it easier to say than stethoscope, I don't know, dianometer. And it's kind of a cool machine. When I, I uh, did occupational medicine, basically we would check grip strength to see how people were healing or their functional capacity for work because it was a lot of manual labor measurement. And you basically squeeze these, look like um, spring pliers almost. You may have seen them, uh, for example, rock climbers will use them or something, but you, know, you, you basically just squeeze them. I have some or somewhere around here, they might be in the garage. But so how is that connected to longevity? Well, grip strength has been shown to be really reliable predictor of all cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, and functional capability because it reflects not only the muscular health, but also correlates with strength of other muscle groups 
and the body's overall vitality. So, okay, now that I understand that, how can we improve it? Well, let's say VO2 max. Like I said, you can measure it. It's usually on a treadmill, but a lot of smartwatches will have the capacity. They may not be as accurate if you were going into a lab, wearing a mask, making you run on a treadmill. But if you're using the same measurement every single day, I think it's a pretty good indicator. That's what I've been using. And that's what I use every day to help motivate myself. I'm like, what is my VH max? What can I do today to make it even better? Um, and again, it, go, it tends to grow down as you get older, but again, you can still improve it from your baseline. Um, so what are the things that we can actually do? Aerobic exercise, like running, cycling, swimming, rowing at a moderate to vigorous intensity, right? That can improve your cardiovascular fitness. The other thing is interval training, like you know, high intensity interval training, a short burst of very intense activity, alternating with recovery periods. So sprints, jump roping, um, you know, different types of um, body weight exercises that you do at a rapid pace. Those type of things can be very helpful for increasing your VO2 max, okay? Walking up a hill at a brisk pace. Um, doesn't have to be like full on jogging. Anything to get your heart rate up and sustain for a period of time that you feel like your, your perceived exertion is quite significant beyond the, you know, it's like oh, hard to finish a sentence because I'm doing this so much, that kind of rate there, okay? Uh, leg strength, I think this is probably a little bit more simple thing to understand how to improve. It's gonna be resistance training, things like squats, leg presses, lunges, deadlifts that progressively overload, right? So you don't wanna just keep doing the same weight forever, but continue to challenge your muscles and body as it adapts. And then things like plyometrics. These can be things like jump squats, uh, box squats. I hate those things, but um, they're very helpful uh, in improving your overall things. Again, you could also do rucking like the weighted vest or backpack, which I've been speaking about, and going up a hill at a brisk pace. So now you're combining weight resistance, weight bearing exercise with short intensities, right? So again, lots of things you can do. Just you know, let your mind be creative. Lastly is the grip strength. So basically there's some hand and forearm exercises. For example, uh, wrist curls, um, different things to build your forearm muscles as well. Um, but then again, you can also do things like kettlebells and stuff. So I'm gonna get to a list here of exercises that really hit all three dynamically um, in just a minute. But again, grip strength, you could hang from a bar, different things like that. Why is this a uh, functional, right? Climbing rope, rope pulling, pulling yourself up to something, pulling something towards you, carrying in your groceries, lifting something heavy, twisting off the jar, right? So those are the things that are really important. And remember the general tips for improvement are consistency, progressive overload, balanced nutrition, which is all about plants, eating a wide variety, and recovery because once you work your muscles you need to allow them to recover so they can be ready to work again um, it's not like you just hit 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 and you know constantly just push till till you're just exhausted remember life has an in and an outflow right you have the breath it comes in and out right your heartbeat beats then it rests it fills and everything so I know the sun is always shining, but in the sense of where a person relatively, the sun sets and the sun rises. But if you go in outer space, the sun's always setting. Anyway, but remember, you need that, that work and recovery, which is very, very important. Um, now we're going to get to a list of exercises that will kind of hit all of them in different ways. So you may want to do a variety. I'm super excited about this love, uh, longevity thing. So I'm going to actually host a longevity lovers workshop on March 30th at 9 a.m. Pacific. If you haven't signed up for the Dr. Marvis uh, newsletter, please do so. I mean, go to my drmarvis.com website, sign up for our newsletter. Um, yeah, I send out a helpful, I hope, helpful newsletter every single week with a yummy plant-based recipe. But I really speak to just really things I hope that you find helpful. Everything from mindfulness to exercise to science on nutrition, uh, sleep, uh, you name it. Um, yeah, and just keep you up to date on things that we're offering. 
And if you are a member of the Healing Kitchen, this workshop, of course, will be free to you. If you are interested in the Healing Kitchen, you can go to the website and check that out as well. DrMarvis.com, click on Healing Kitchen, and you'll see your options there. Because everything is free to the Healing Kitchen members. All expert workshops, my workshops, every week we meet live, all the old recipes, all the recordings, all the eBooks. It's fantastic, fantastic value, guys. So it is so much fun too. Okay, there's that. So Lori, get to the list. Okay, I'm getting to the list. Okay, so what are those things? What are these exercises? There's eight exercises that I came up with <laughs> that you can really improve via two max, leg strength, and your grip strength. So circuit training. You're like, what's circuit training? Circuit training with a couple of exercises. These would include squats, lunges, maybe push-ups, whatever you can, and then rows. Okay, so think how you can maybe even do that. Um, I was thinking you could you could squat down, grab some dumbbells, come up, lift up, down, lunge, or you do a lunge before the squat, get down, do your push-up, and then do your rows. There's a flow. I'm sure you could think of something. I know I could sled, push, and pulls, right? So they are pull. They're great for building leg strength um, and grip strength. And as you're pulling, I mean, that's, that's a pretty intense exercise. And then you rest and then you do it again. Next up is deadlifts. So these are really a compound exercise, right, that targets the legs back and grip strength. Um, they're good for building overall strength and, like I said, the grip strength. But they're also short bursts because it's a big, right, maybe not – as long as typical hit training, but yeah, it's getting close. Next would be kettlebell swings. You guys, I love kettlebell swings. Like I love kettlebell swings. They're so much fun. Um, basically, take a kettlebell. You can do two or one arm swings. I like to do sets of uh, five sets, ten on each side of each side with a rest between. Your heart rate will go up, especially as you increase the weight. You will work out your butt and you work out your grip. And it's fabulous. And then I combine that with Turkish get-ups. I'm pooped by the end of it. Okay, next, a rowing machine is fantastic. If you have the space or somewhere you can utilize one, grip strength, leg strength, and endurance. Getting that heart rate up. You can go as fast or slow as you want. Rowers are perfect. Um, another great one would be like um, rock climbing. They have great grip strength, leg strength, flexibility, mobility. It definitely can be intense at times. So there's that. Pull-ups. If you can do pull-ups, but you can use bands and different things. You're doing grip strength. You're also doing um, some, of course, you're building uh, your endurance because, honestly, that takes a lot of effort, right? And you definitely will see your heart rate come up. You could do battle ropes, right? So those big ropes you'll see people doing, right? That's grip strength. It's leg strength. And definitely get your heart rate up. Uh, next is a farmer's walk. So you can take some kettlebells or a dumbbell, and these are heavy weights. So you're you're walking across. So the heavier, the better, right? In the sense that you're going to get the heart rate up. You can walk for I don't know 100, 200 meters, and then sit down, rest, and do it again. So again, you're doing your leg strength, your grip strength, and your heart rate. So what are those eight again? Circuit training to include squats, lunges, push-ups, and rows in a circuit, sled, push and pulls deadlifts, kettlebell swings, a rowing machine, pull-ups, battle ropes, or farmer's walk. Farmer's walk. Okay, so there is that. I hope that is helpful. I don't know why I got super excited about sharing that with you guys today, but I thought it would be it would be fun to talk about. And then I thought, man, I'm going to need to do this workshop. Longevity levers. These are the levers that you can pull and push to make it simple to improve our lives. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I don't know if anyone else gets excited, but I do. Um, okay, guys. So that would be all I got for you today. I hope that's helpful. Yeah. So again, as always, I want to say thank you for being here. And I'm sending you love, joy, peace, healing, and abundance into your life because we all need a little bit more of that. So have a good one. And you guys take a, take a great rest of your day. All right.